Now I am going to show you as I promised you the exam slide. So in your exam, in the practical, in the hematology section, they will give you a peripheral blood smear along with that they will give you bone marrow biopsy along with that they will give you bone marrow aspiration slides and then they will ask you to diagnose this particular condition. So this peripheral blood smear okay as you can see in the low power view what is it that you understand from here? We do understand that there is cytopenia there is reduced count okay there is cytopenia from the PBS picture. Now, this is basically the bone marrow aspirate picture, okay. So, in the low power view, what is it that you understand, okay. What do you see? What are these cells? What are these cells that you appreciate over here? What are these cells? Yes. What are these cells? These are all macrophages. So, we can see that there is increased amount of histiocytes, okay, which you see inside the bone marrow aspirate. If you go to the high power view, in some of the macrophages, this is also a macrophage. This is another macrophage. In some of the macrophages, you can see that they have actually ingested another hematopoietic cells. So, there is hemophagocytosis. Let me show you other types of hemophagocytosis. Another hemophagocytosis we can see over here. Another we can see over here. Hemophagocytosis. If you see in this particular diagram, you can see very classically, okay, these cells which have been hemophagocytosed, okay. So this is all hemophagocytosis and you have to see, remember not all the macrophages is going to show hemophagocytosis. So you have to search thoroughly in the exams, okay. Now this is the bone marrow biopsy as you can appreciate over here, okay. In the bone marrow biopsy what you can appreciate over here, you can appreciate again the hemophagocytosis, okay. You can see, okay, the histiocytes, you can see increased amount of histiocytes. And in the high power view, you can again appreciate the hemophagocytosis that is being over here. This macrophage has ingested an RBC as you can appreciate over here. Again over here also the same thing. Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. Today we are going to read about hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis HLH or also called as macrophage activation syndrome. Now, this macrophage activation syndrome or HLH as you know, it is a very, very important question in your exams and every year this question is asked in your hematology or this question will be asked in your viva as well. Sometimes the examiner is also bringing a slide, okay, for showing you and I am going to show you these exam slides today to stay tuned till the end of the lecture where I am going to show you all these slides. So, what is it that we are going to discuss today? We are going to discuss about the basic introduction of this particular topic that is followed by the etiopathogenesis, then the laboratory diagnosis and finally we are going to end with the clinical features and we are going to see all the exam slides, okay, that is asked from this particular topic, okay. So, let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any more time, okay. So, what is this HLH or macrophage activation syndrome? So, remember it is a reactive condition, it is not a malignant process, it is a reactive condition marked by cytopenias and signs symptoms of systemic inflammation related to macrophage activation. So, the macrophage gets activated over here and all signs symptoms are because of that and it is for this reason that it is also sometimes referred to as macrophage activation syndrome or MAS. Now, the disorder is a clinical syndrome which is characterized by uncontrolled activation of histiocytes and T cells in the bone marrow liver as well as spleen. Now, these cells, okay, they secrete inflammatory cytokines because they have been activated. The histiocytes they demonstrate phagocytosis of the hematopoietic cells. So, histiocytes demonstrate phagocytosis of hematopoietic cells, okay. So, what is it called as? This is called as hemophagocytosis, okay. Now, remember one thing that why is it important for us to understand this condition? Because it is a life-threatening hyperinflammatory disease caused by an uncontrolled and dysfunctional immune response resulting in hypercytokinemia. The hallmark of the disease is low or absent natural killer cell and CD8 plus T lymphocyte cytotoxicity. HLH is fatal if it is untreated, it is fatal, okay. The common feature of all forms of HLH is systemic activation of macrophages and CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells. Activated macrophages, they phagocytose the blood cell progenitors in the marrow and in the peripheral tissues. So, once these are activated, okay, once activated, the macrophages and the lymphocytes, they release a stew of mediators, okay. And what do such mediators do? They suppress hematopoiesis leading to the cytopenias that you see. 
and they also release a lot of cytokines leading to what is known as cytokine storm also they might lead to systemic inflammatory response syndrome so ultimately it causes systemic inflammation okay and it might also proceed into a shock like syndrome manner okay so this is about the basics and the introduction of the macrophage activation syndrome this is what you should write in the basics okay now the etiopathogenesis now over here there are two types of hlh one is the primary hlh one is the secondary hlh so primary hlh can occur in two settings first setting it can occur as a familial hlh and in the familial setting that is as a genetic group so over here there are mutations in several genes like prf1 unc13d stx11 etc all of these mutations they will impact the ability of cytotoxic t cells and natural killer cells to properly form or deploy cytotoxic granules okay this is the first variety of the primary lh uh, hlh another variety is associated with immunodeficiency syndromes like chediac hegashi syndrome or x linked lymphoproliferative disorder type 1 okay now b b is the secondary hlh now secondary means it is secondary to a lot of conditions and this is also the more common variety which is encountered in the day to day life so the first important secondary variety of hlh is infections most commonly which infection most common infection is the epstein barr virus infection secondly it is cytomegalovirus infection so any kind of infections can trigger the hlh most commonly the viruses ebv and cytomegalovirus these two viruses are most commonly implicated in the pathogenesis of secondary hlh okay so but always remember that any viral bacterial fungal protozoal infection may trigger the syndrome most commonly it is ebv and cmv sometimes the hlh stems from defect in the ability of the cytotoxic t cells to kill the infected cells so as a result of persistent infection the cytotoxic t cells they continue to make cytokines leading to excessive macrophage activation so this is the basic pathogenesis etiopathogenesis of infection triggered hlh syndrome okay then we are having sometimes hlh is also occurring associated with the lymphomas so hlh is a common complication of peripheral t cell lymphoma and in these conditions you will see that there is immune dysregulation now always remember although we are using the term hlh and mas okay interchangeably but remember macrophage activation syndrome is one of the types of secondary hlh okay if any examiner ask you usually if they are asking you about macrophage activation syndrome or about hlh you have to write the same answer but if they ask you more specifically you can state that macrophage activation syndrome is a type of secondary hlh okay then uh, you can have hlh associated with immunosuppression secondarily in hiv patients for example or patients who are receiving immuno uh, you know immunosuppressive therapy then we are having sporadic hlh and we have hlh associated with drug intake as well so these are the secondary forms of hlh now now looking at the basic etiopathogenesis and the basic pathogenesis if you see regardless of the trigger whether it be primary or secondary or whatever is the trigger the basic pathogenesis is the same across all forms of hlh so what happens that you are having number one the activation and proliferation of the t cells which leads to the release of cytokines like interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and interleukin number 12 okay simultaneously there is also activation and proliferation of the macrophages which then releases in turn it is releasing interleukin number 6 interferon gamma and tnf alpha now this leads to persistent infection okay per, sorry persistent inflammation it leads to persistent inflammation and basically certain cytokines like interleukin 1 interleukin number 6 uh, okay these interleukin interleukin number 12 these interleukin is responsible for fever okay they are responsible for fever okay some of these cytokines if you see they you know this kind of persistent inflammation it leads to inhibition of lipoprotein lipase leading to hyper triglyceridemia okay they might also lead to this persistent inflammation is also leading to increased amount of serum ferritin okay very high levels of serum ferritin is seen they also lead to the secretion of plasminogen activator okay which might lead to chronic dic okay and as you know the plasminogen activator is going to activate the plasminogen and going to activate the coagulation cascade ultimately leading to consumptive coagulopathy that is dic leading to hypofibrinogenemia okay so these are the basic things or the basic etiopathogenesis 
or across all types of HLH. Also, you will see that there is low NK cell activity and low CD8 plus cytotoxic T lymphocyte cytotoxicity. So, this is the basic, uh, you know, uh, uh, pathogenesis of uh, your uh, condition that is the HLH syndrome or the macrophage activation syndrome. Now, very importantly, they can ask you what is the criteria for the diagnosis of HLH. So, there are two criteria either A, which is the molecular criteria, or B. So, what is the criteria number A? So, criteria is molecular diagnosis which is consistent with HLH. So, if one of the known FHL mutation is present, for example, mutation is in FHL1, FHL2, 3, 4 or 5, okay. If mutation in either of these is present, then the molecular diagnosis is made for HLH. If this is not present, then there is another group of criteria that has to be fulfilled. So, either A or O. Uh, or B. In B, the diagnostic criteria for HLS should be fulfilled. There are 8 criteria. So, 5, at least 5 out of 8 criteria has to be fulfilled. So, what are these criteria? Number 1 is fever. If it is more than equal to 38.5 degree centigrade, if there is clinomegaly, if there is cytopenia. Cytopenia will be, you know, for this purpose, more than equal to 2 out of the 3 lineage should be affected in the peripheral blood. Hemoglobin less than 9, platelet less than 1 lakh or neutrophils less than 1000 per cubic millimeter. For infants, the hemoglobin, the uh, less than 4 weeks, this criteria, this uh, 9 gram should be around 10. Okay. Then the fourth criteria is hypertriglyceridemia and or hypofibrinogenemia. So, fasting triglyceride level more than equal to 3 millimole per liter and fibrinogen level less than equal to 1.5 gram per liter. This hypofibrino uh, hypofibrinogenemia is indicative that there is some sort of consumptive coagulopathy which is taking place very similar to the DIC. Then very importantly the next criteria is hemophagocytosis in the bone marrow or in the spleen or in the lymph node. There should not be any evidence of a malignant protest. Okay, any malignancy if it is there, any malignant process if you see in the bone marrow then it rules out uh, the, the macrophage activation syndrome or your HLS syndrome because it is a reactive condition. Okay, there is a trigger. Next criteria is low or absent natural killer cell activity, serum ferritin levels more than equal to 500 microgram per liter, elevated soluble CD25 that is soluble interleukin 2 receptor more than equal to 2400 units per ml. Okay. So, this is the criteria. Okay. At least 5 out of these 8 criteria should be there for the diagnosis of HLH. Either this or molecular diagnosis consistent with HLH, the mutation in FHL genes should be present. Now, coming to the laboratory diagnosis of HLH. So, what you are going to see? You are going to see anemia, thrombocytopenia. You see anemia as well as thrombocytopenia. Very high levels of plasma, ferritin and soluble interleukin-2 receptor which is indicative of severe inflammation. Altered LFTs and increased triglycerides due to the hepatitis which occurs. Okay. FDPs, fibrin degradation products will be positive, will be found and decreased fibrinogen levels which is indicative of consumptive coagulopathy and DIC like condition. Bone marrow, remember there is no marrow hyperplasia and malignant process. So, no mal marrow hypoplasia or malignant process is noted. So, bone marrow is usually normal cellular to hypocellular. It is associated with decreased erythropoiesis and myelopoiesis normal to decreased megakaryopoiesis. There is increased amount of marrow macrophages and many of such macrophages are demonstrating phagocytosis of the platelets, red cells, white cells and immature myeloid and erythroid cells. Pulse stain, if you do the pulse stain, it was going to demonstrate the macrophages with phagocytosis. Why we are doing the pulse stain? Pulse stain is going to demonstrate the increased iron stores and basically macrophages are containing such iron stores. Okay. So, basically, they will highlight these iron stores and in the process, indirectly, they will highlight the macrophages and then they are going to highlight the phagocytosis that is, you know, uh, uh, happening by the macrophages. Also, you might use the CD68 staining which can outline the macrophages. Hemophagocytosis is, is also seen in the Kupfer cells in the liver and littoral cells in the spleen and in the macrophages of the lymph nodes as well. Okay. Okay. Now, coming to the clinical features. Most patients, they present with acute febrile illness associated with hepatosplenomegaly. The familial forms may appear early in life, even in infants, while other forms are sporadic and may affect people of any age. If left untreated, the disease can progress rapidly to multi-organ failure, shock and death. 
Prognosis is grim and especially in the familial form, the survival is less than two months without treatment. So, what are the treatments that you can give? Number one, you can give immunosuppressive drugs. Number two, mild chemotherapy. Administration of antibodies against the inf in, uh, interferon gamma. And uh, if these treatments, they don't work. Okay. So, for example, if there is a primary HLH with mutations or persistent or resistant disease, even after all these steps, the disease is persistent. In that case, definitive management is to go for hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Now, with prompt treatment, with or without hematopoietic stem cell transplant, the survival is only 50%. And even in those individuals who survive, many suffer significant morbidity. Okay. Uh, for example, in adults, you can see renal damage in children, growth retardation and intellectual disability can be seen. Now, always remember one thing, just hemophagocytosis in the bone marrow is not sufficient for the diagnosis of macrophage activation syndrome. So, it is called as a syndrome because of a, uh, because they have constellation of features, right? So, there are, that is why for the diagnosis, 5 out of 8 criteria they have given. Okay, that is why remember one thing, only, uh, you know, diagnosis of hemophagocytosis in the bone marrow, it is not sufficient for diagnosis. Remember this point very importantly, you will be asked in Viva about this particular question. Now, I am going to show you as I promised you the exam slide. So, in your exam, in the practical, in the hematology section, they will give you a peripheral blood smear. Along with that, they will give you bone marrow biopsy. Along with that, they will give you bone marrow aspiration slides. And then they will ask you to diagnose this particular condition. So, this peripheral blood smear, okay, as you can see in the low power view, what is it that you understand from here? We do understand that there is cytopenia, there is reduced count, okay, there is cytopenia from the PBS picture. Now, this is basically the bone marrow aspirate picture, okay. So, in the low power view, what is it that you understand, okay, what do you see, what are these cells? What are these cells that you appreciate over here, what are these cells, yes? What are these cells? These are all macrophages. So, we can see that there is increased amount of histiocytes, okay, which you see inside the bone marrow aspirate. If you go to the high power view in some of the macrophages, this is also a macrophage, this is another macrophage. In some of the macrophages, you can see that they have actually ingested another hematopoietic cells. So, there is hemophagocytosis. Let me show you other types of hemophagocytosis. Another hemophagocytosis we can see over here, another we can see over here, hemophagocytosis. If you see in this particular diagram, you can see very classically, okay, these cells which have been hemophagocytosed, okay. So, this is all hemophagocytosis and you have to see, remember not all the macrophages is going to show hemophagocytosis. So, you have to search thoroughly in the exams, okay. Now, this is the bone marrow biopsy as you can appreciate over here. Okay, in the bone marrow biopsy, what you can appreciate over here, you can appreciate again the hemophagocytosis. Okay, you can see, okay, the histiocytes, you can see increased amount of histiocytes and in the high power view, you can again appreciate the hemophagocytosis that is being over here. This macrophage has ingested an RBC as you can appreciate over here. Again, over here also the same thing. Okay, so with this, we have completed a very, very important exam slide that is hemophagocytosis or macrophage activation syndrome. Not only that, it is a long answer question for your exams as well. Thank you very much for watching this particular video.